good morning, good afternoon, good evening, saints in the Lord. Now, 2 Peter 2, 19 through, I believe, 21 are passages that works salvationists like to use to destroy the hearts of the simple. And, and, and the learned Christian, even the learned Christian can fall victim to these passages as far as, let's say, a theological debate or discussion. Uh, if, if you allow somebody to walk you through those passages slowly, they're going to say, well, see, it says here he was washed. See, he says it returns to his own vomit. And if you allow them to stay there without the full counsel of even the same author's teaching, which is by the Holy Spirit, of course, then you you could get sort of humiliated, maybe. I, I've just seen a video on a person who understands salvation and predestination, and he forgot to mention a very important scripture to defend the position of not only sovereign grace, but eternal security. You see, when you don't believe in sovereign grace, you, you got you got good theological ground, or I shouldn't say ground, but you got you at least have a doctrinal teaching that makes somewhat sense from the standpoint of free will. You could walk away from Christ at any time. Sovereign grace teaches eternal security by default. It's built into the doctrine. God doesn't lose his own. Why would he? And if he could, then he could lose anyone. Jesus says that all that the Father has given to him, he shall lose nothing. That's his will. See, what these people do is they mess around with John 6 and a multitude of other passages. They just have to tap dance around to destroy sovereign grace. And then they attack eternal security by dismantling sovereign grace. That works hand in hand. But moving away from sovereign grace for a moment, sticking to 2 Peter 19 through 21 where the verses are talking clearly about false teachers, the point of contention from the works salvation, the Arminian view, is that these were born-again babes. These were Christians. They were saved at one point, and now they're not, period. That's their position. And they're going to use mainly the bottom portion of the second chapter of Second Peter to prove that. And they're going to say, see, it says here, as a sow was washed, is now again in the mire, which is the mud. So they're dirty again. You're dirty with sin. This is insane. And then it says also, as a dog returns to his own vomit. So you're a dog and a pig for number one. Jesus said, do not cast your pearls before swine. You're never considered a dog. A dog is someone who's outside the gates of the city at the end of Revelation. Dogs and sorcerers. A pig is someone who is never considered someone who's in Christ. Okay, to begin with. But they'll try to say, oh, it's just a euphemism. It's saying that your sins were washed and now they're not. <laughs> wow. Well, the very same Peter who wrote 2 Peter also wrote 1 Peter. And in 1 Peter, he tells you in verse 23 that we are not born again of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed by the word of God, which abideth forever. <laughs> so you mean to tell me, and this is to the work salvationist, you, you lying, unregenerate, heretic bastard, you mean to tell me that Second Peter contradicts not only the entire council of soteriology, salvation as a whole, but now it contradicts 1 Peter because 1 Peter plainly says that we are not born again by corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed by the word of God, which abideth forever. Now, if 2 Peter 2, 19 through 21 is stating that we can lose our salvation because the passages say a dog returns to his own vomit, and a pig that was a sow that was once washed is now returned to the mire, the mud, is now dirty again, that you're unclean now, that you're not made holy and blameless by the blood of the cross, you're now dirty in sin again and unsaved. 
Well then, that would mean you are born again by corruptible seed. So Peter is saying in his first epistle, a lie, according to you, works salvationist, lying, heretic, unregenerate moron, you're telling me that I actually am born again of corruptible seed. It doesn't matter who it is that corrupts it, whether it be God, Satan, or the person. God, Satan, or you can corrupt the word of God, the seed which you are born again of. It is indeed corruptible to these people. They are liars, they are heretics, and that is bedrock proof that you cannot lose your salvation. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, saints in the Lord.